unboxing. Remove the foam carrying case from the cardboard sleeve. Open the foam case by pulling out the lever next to the handle and twisting it 180 degrees, then lifting the lid. After removing the lid, carefully lift the drone out, holding it by the main body, not any of the motors. Next, remove the remote controller, bag containing the blades and charging unit from the foam case. Audio Assembly. Remove each of the blades from their fabric sleeve. Eight are included, but you will only need to use four. Secure each blade to the drone by holding the motor, the part that looks like a silver cylinder, firmly pushing the blade on top of the motor and twisting them 45 degrees until they lock. Ensure the colour of the circle on top of the blades matches the colour of the arrow pointing towards the motor, either black or silver. Silver blades require a clockwise rotation to secure them, while the black ones require an anti-clockwise rotation. Next, remove the cover for the camera. This can be achieved by holding the legs on one side, which the cover is attached to, and gently pulling the cover downwards. Repeat for the other side and place the cover somewhere safe. To ensure a safe flight, test the battery level on the drone by pressing the circular button next to the four LED indicators. If less than three of the indicators light up, you will need to charge the battery. Charging. Remove the battery from the drone by pressing on the top and bottom tabs where you tested the battery level and pulling out the battery unit. If you press the tabs hard enough, little force will be required. Take the charging wire and connect it to a wall outlet. Connect this to the DC converter box and then plug in the battery. Once all four LED indicators on the battery are illuminated, simply push the battery deck back in the drone the same way you removed it. Setting up. In order to fly the drone, it is required that you download the DJI GO app, which is available for free from the App Store or the Google Play Store. Using a standard USB charging wire, connect the USB end to the port on the back of the controller and then plug in your phone the same way you would if you were charging it. Lift up the phone dock by rotating it about the hinge 180 degrees vertically. Push the button on the right side of the dock to extend the top, allowing plenty of room to fit either your phone or a tablet. Place your phone into the dock as shown and push it down until a secure fit is made. Extend the antennae, positioning them at a 45 degree angle as shown. Powering on. Power on the controller by pressing the power button, releasing it and then holding it down again for two seconds. The four LED lights should illuminate white. Open the DJI GO app on your phone, ensuring the Phantom 4 drone is selected. Power on the drone by pressing the circular button on the battery, releasing it and then holding it down again for two seconds. The four LED lights should illuminate green. Stay clear of the propellers and the camera. The drone will make a noise and everything will move slightly to automatically calibrate. Preparing to fly. The app on your phone should now display aircraft connected. Click the blue icon labeled camera. A display showing the aircraft status will now appear on your phone. Under the section labeled compass, click calibrate. Scroll to the bottom and then click Calibrate Compass. After you've done this, follow the on-screen instructions. Move at least two meters away from the controller. Hold the drone with the propellers facing up at arm's length and rotate 360 degrees clockwise. Next, hold the drone with the propellers facing away from you and rotate an additional 360 degrees. Place the drone on the ground far away from any obstacles or obstructions. To initiate the rotors, pull both the joysticks on the controller down and towards each other. 
they will start spinning. Now you are ready to fly. Before attempting to do so, you must receive training on the controls of the drone, which a simple video simply cannot cover. You actually need to experience this in person. We recommend you receive training from an approved representative in the school, either a staff member or a designated student.